Kids, can you go? What's wrong with a cup of water or a drink of water? Say, well, there's... Oh, I did talk about water, didn't I? Yeah, go on, go on you're not in here. <laughs> what is wrong with a drink of water? Too much chlorine. You know, really we think, well, there's nothing wrong with a drink of water. Actually, Redonna has a point because she really wants more drinks of water and is limited on that. Hopefully turned loose maybe even tomorrow on that that she can drink more water. But there's a passage in Scripture, and it, it's more than once that it's recorded. Um, I have in particular 2 Samuel 23 that I'm going to be reading it out of, and, and you can see it in First Chronicles as well. And it's one of those you think, well, there's a lot of important stories in the Bible that aren't recorded twice, and yet here we see this being recorded and, and restated again. And of course, it's the history of what was happening with David. If you don't know the story of David, who, who was king of Israel, um, he followed Saul, and it wasn't, it wasn't an easy transition. I mean, during the process, and, and David was, he was loved by Saul at first, and then he was hated by Saul um, because of, everybody knows the story of David and Goliath, and, and David um, getting all of this praise that was coming to him because he, he ended up being a mighty warrior, but he was also anointed by Samuel the prophet to be king, and Saul ended up just absolutely hating David. Saul was king. He hated David. He wanted to kill David. Saul's son, Jonathan, and David became extremely good friends. I mean, they loved each other like brothers. And, and Jonathan actually helped in the escape of David when he was leaving. And there was a lot of things that happened. Eventually, Saul and Jonathan as well got killed in battle. And, it was, and the Philistines were, they were wreaking havoc with the people of Israel, um, really going back to how, how Saul was leading Israel and the evil in his heart and the things that were happening with that. But David found himself in many cases hiding. Um, even though he had, he had many men with him, they were greatly outnumbered by the Philistines. And God delivered them on a lot of occasions, but there were occasions that they just had to, they had to lay low. And this is one of those occasions, and I'm going to read in 2 Samuel 23, beginning in verse 13. And if you read earlier than this, you start reading about in verse 8, after you see this psalm of David. And this psalm isn't included in the rest of the psalms of David. They're in psalms, but in the first part of, of chapter 23, which is a really interesting psalm. But about verse 8, it starts talking about these mighty men, the 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 valiant warriors, if you will, of David, and some of the things that they did, and just amazing. I mean, one guy holding off, you know, while everybody else is gone, he's holding off and he's beating everybody. It's, it's like a movie. And, and you see all these things, even though it's kind of shortened down a little bit. But then in verse 13, it says, Then three of the thirty chief men went down and came to David in the harvest time to the cave of Adullam, while the troop of the Philistines was camping in the valley of Raphim, David was then in the stronghold, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. Now, one thing we might miss if we're just reading this, where was David's hometown? Bethlehem. That's where he came from. And so here the Philistines, I mean, they are encamped around there, and, and it's David's hometown, and here he is in a cave. Now, Anybody ever sat in around in a cave for a little while? Besides me, anybody? <laughs> okay, you just it. When we were kids, we loved to go in caves, and we got into some precarious situations every now and then. But there were some really good caves that we could go in, and you just go in there, and and you know, even maybe just turn off the lights and just sit there and talk, and and uh, it was it was just kind of an interesting thing, and you know, especially in. I'm glad most of the kids are gone, especially if nobody knew where you were. You know, <laughs> you, know you thought you were getting away. With it. Actually, you were kind of getting away with something because they were supposed to know if we were going in caves. But 
here, you know, you have this situation, you're sitting around talking, and if you've never been in a cave, you've been in a situation where you were just sitting around talking. Like, we haven't had a situation this year. Anybody lost their power yet to any weather or anything? All right, yeah, a few. Um, you know when the power goes out? And you, you find yourself sitting around talking about things maybe you haven't talked about for a long time, visiting with one another, maybe playing some games, I mean, killing some time. They're sitting in this cave, and, and David makes a statement, and you can, you, can almost, you can almost fully get the feel of this. The Philistines are down there in Bethlehem, and he's probably thinking about that, remembering when he was a boy, he was a shepherd, and he says, oh, what I wouldn't give for a drink of water from the well in Bethlehem. You remember maybe those times as a kid that something just really stands out to you. Something, maybe it's a smell, maybe it's a song, maybe it's a drink of water. Maybe it's peanuts in your Coke. I don't know what it is. You know, it's, I mean, there, there are those things that, yeah, some of you know what I'm talking about, right? But there are those things that kind of stand out. And here's David, and he's sitting in the cave, and he says, oh, that I just had a drink of water from Bethlehem. I don't think David was trying to give anybody a hint. I don't read that into this, that that's what's going on because of some of the things that happened after. Now, there was a little boy, and I'll tell you, I read this, and I just got to share it with you, but the little boy that was praying, um, with his mom had come into the room, and, and, and uh, they were at Grandma's house, and, and so he was saying a prayer, and he was praying for this one and for that one, and God, would you please um, bless this one and help this one to get well. And as he went on to the prayer, he kept getting louder, and louder until he got right to the end of the prayer and he said, and please let me get a bike for my birthday. <laughs> and the mother says, I don't think you have to shout. God's not hard of hearing. He said, no, but Grandma is. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, that, He was meaning to give a hint, right? I don't think that's what David was doing. Let's read it and, and see what happens. Verse 15. David had a craving and said, Oh, that someone would give me a water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem, which was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. They went, broke through the Philistines, and they went and they got David some water and they came back. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. Now stop right there for just a second. How would you feel? If you were one of the three, how would you feel? You'd be mad? You'd think, I just risked my life to get you this drink of water. We don't see the response. We see absolutely no response from these three. But we don't see them walk away. But David takes the water that they've brought back to him. They, he just expressed that he would love to have a drink of water from that well. And they go and get it. That is how dedicated these men are to David. He is their Lord their master, their leader. Now when we use the word Lord, it doesn't always have to refer to God. We're used to that. He was the guy. And if he said he wanted a drink of water from a well, they were going to get it. And they did. As we read on, you know, these weren't the three most mighty warriors that he had. These were three of the 30. There are others that are mentioned in the things that they could do and the things that they did do. But these guys went and they got David some water. And he takes it and it says he pours it out to the Lord. Now listen what he says. 
And maybe this makes all the difference in the world. Verse 17, And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Shall I drink the blood of these men who risked their lives for me so I could have a drink of water? David calls it blood. Because those men, they did. They risked their lives. They put their lives in jeopardy just for David to have a drink of water. How precious is a drink of water? Maybe it depends on what it took to get it. You know, there's no indication that, I mean, it doesn't say anything about that they drank water on the way back. You know, they got a lot of water and brought a lot of water to everybody. No, they just got a drink of water for David. So they probably had water in the cave. I mean, a lot of caves have water. There's no indication that they didn't have water at all. David was just reminiscing about, oh, I wish I could have a drink from that well. I've heard people talk before about the old hand crank pump, you know, and you'd, you'd pump the cold water up from the well and how good it tasted. That's kind of, to me, the situation I see here. So it wasn't, it wasn't like they were dying of thirst. So that's not what made this water so important. What made this water so important is exactly what David said. They risked their lives for this. How can I drink this? It says he poured it out to the Lord. He sacrificed it. He would not drink it. It was worth more than he should drink. In this case, that's what was wrong with this cup of water. It wasn't wrong to give it to God. It wasn't wrong for these men to go and get it. But David said, far be it from me to drink this. These men risked their life for it. There's a lot of situations that something maybe as simple as a cup of water, that something isn't wrong in and of itself. But the effects that it's going to have on other people what if David would have just said, oh, great, you got me some water from the well at the gate in Bethlehem. And he just drank the water down. Would the men have felt good about that? Probably so. They would have felt good about it. How would everybody else have felt about it? What? Slided? They didn't get, get anybody else any water. Or, I wish I'd have been one of the ones that went to get the water. Or, you know what, who does he think he is? Putting our lives in danger. He's not one of the ones that went, but putting our lives in danger over a drink of water. You know, I thought he was a man of God but he doesn't care about us any more than that. You see how things could start happening there? And so it could have been absolutely the wrong thing to do, just to drink a cup of water. An arrogant thing to do, maybe even. Like, well, I can drink this water if I want to. They brought it to me. They do what I say. I mean, I really didn't intend for him to, but I've got the water, I'm going to drink it. It's my right. I mean, all kinds of things might have come into David's head, and it didn't. 
But all kinds of things come into our heads at times when it's something that maybe isn't wrong in and of itself. But we think, well, they gave it to me. Well, it's my right. There's nothing wrong with it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, there is that discussion. And and the discussion, though, though somewhat different in context, isn't a whole lot different in application. They had those that could eat the meat that was sacrificed to idols because they knew there wasn't another God anyway. But then they had those who had always worshipped another God up until this point of believing in Jesus Christ and now laying that aside. But in that part of that worship that they had, had gotten used to growing up, when they would eat of meat that was sacrificed to those idols, they were still in worship to that idol, to that God in their minds. And so they really struggled with this. To the point they thought, there is absolutely no way I can do that. And then thinking, if somebody else is doing it, well, that's wrong too. Somebody else thinking, well, they could eat, so I can eat, because there is, there's not another God anyway. There's nothing wrong with that meat. And you can see the the dilemma that they were in and how some people were approaching the situation thinking, it's my right. I can eat this meat if I want to. And there's a statement that's made over in verse 23. Paul says this, All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. He goes on with instruction for them. Such as, don't ask any questions. If you don't know it's meat that's sacrificed to an idol, and nobody's making a point that this is meat that's sacrificed to an idol and they're selling it in the marketplace, don't ask any questions. It's meat. But if somebody says, this is meat that's sacrificed to an idol, why don't you buy some of this and be a part of this, then don't eat it for the sake of of the person's conscience that can't. He says, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Could David drink the water? Sure. Was that going to edify him or his men? Edify means build up. Was that going to build anybody up by him drinking that? Maybe the three men. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. And so David chose not to drink the water, but instead, what did he do with it? Poured it out to God. He didn't just pour it out. He poured it out to God. He he dedicated it to Him. If people are going to die for somebody, let it be for God, not for me. And so he sacrificed it to God. I'm not exactly sure where you need to apply this. But there is application, I think, for all of us. You may need... That's a pretty good heart player right there. (laughs) We may need to recognize something that we think this this is no big deal. It's no more important than a drink of water. But the effect that it's going to have on somebody else or what somebody else has had to go through to get to this point. You're probably already thinking of some applications What I want to ask you is, 
Are those applications for somebody else or are those applications for you? It is so easy to think of something that somebody else needs to give up doing because it's causing somebody else a problem. You know, it's really easy to think of. How about us? How about you? What is it that we do in life that we think, and if, if we ever get to the point thinking, I'm going to do this, it's my right to do this. There's nothing wrong to do that, with doing this. If we're thinking that, then there's probably some reason that we're having to be defensive for ourselves. And what's it doing to somebody else? Is it putting them in jeopardy? Just so we can have a drink of water? Let's think about those three guys for a minute. You know, David poured it out to God, but so he was in the dilemma whether to do the right thing or not. How to approach this situation. And he didn't, there seems to be no reluctance. There doesn't even, even seem to be any wavering back and forth with David. It just seems to be immediate. They give him the water and, I can't drink this. God, this is yours. It's good to see leaders like that. These three guys, did they do the right thing? David said it. He expressed a desire, and they went for it. They were so dedicated, they... It was almost like they didn't even think about it, whether it was going to risk their lives or not. They had full confidence that if David wanted a drink of water, God was going to bless him with a drink of water, and he was going to use them to go and get it. That is the way that these guys were approaching things. When one guy could hold off hundreds with a sword, breaking through the Philistines and drawing some water from a well and running back to the cave, big deal. I mean, that's, they were approaching things that way. They weren't looking at the danger they weren't considering their lives any more important than getting David a drink of water from the well he desired one from. Man, what an example of dedication to their master. What about us? How's our dedication? How often do we pause when we think, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, or whether it's spiritually, when we think we might be in danger, that we pause in getting that cup of water. I'm not talking about going and getting one for David. You know, that is an amazing thing, that Jesus was hanging on a cross. There were only a few there. You see John and the two Marys. You don't hear of others mentioned there at the foot of the cross. But Jesus says, I'm thirsty. Where were those disciples? He said so very little. But he said, I'm thirsty. Vinegar, soaked in a sponge, lifted up to him. You suppose Jesus remembered any wells where the water was good and cold? Say, well... <laughs> We can't be back there at the cross. We weren't there. No, we weren't. But are we? Another passage is in Matthew 10. If you guys want to come up, you can. Matthew 10. 
Verse 40, it says, For he who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because of your name as followers of Christ, truly I say to you, he will not lose his reward. If somebody gives a cup of water to one who is a disciple of Jesus Christ, they will not lose their reward. Because Jesus said in passages like Matthew chapter 25, even as I mentioned earlier, that if we've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, Jesus says, you've done it unto me. Or if you have not done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've not done it unto me. That if we have the opportunity, even just to give a cup of water, What will we risk to do that? Most of the time, I mean, we have the opportunity to do a whole lot more than just give a brother or sister in Christ a drink of water. But if it was that simple, Jesus says, you won't lose your reward. So coming from two standpoints, if you're... If you're in the position, and we all are, because we have Jesus as our Master. We have Jesus as our leader. We have Jesus as our Lord. And if we see nothing else in the desire of Jesus, it's that all men would come to Him. He says, and I will be lifted up from the earth to draw all men unto me. what he wants more than anything else I think if we were sitting around in a cave talking and Jesus would spout out some desire that he had if it was more than anything else that would come out the thing is there's recognition of cups of water being given to disciples in this passage. When you're given a cup of water, what do you do with it? I don't know where all the applications went. I don't know where all of your minds went. I mean, that's up to you. Hopefully we've looked into the Word of God at a story and you think, man, that one made it in there twice. Why? I think we can see why. There's an importance for everything that's in here. It's all about bringing us back together with God as people. So if you need to respond to this in some way, if this is spoken to you as God's word, come as we stand and sing.